Okay, so you got the picture, okay? Uh, what did you see? God's throne, right? And there was a branch of God's throne in, you know, in, on, on earth, long time ago. What was it? The branch of heaven's God's throne. It was the, the tabernacle, right? And let's read, you know, uh, Exodus chapter 25, 22. There above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony, I will meet you and give you all my commands for Israelites. This is the promise of God. And as you see, in, this is you know, the ark um, of the commandments. And God promised that, you know, I will meet you and give my commands. Right? So, where can you hear the voice of God and feeling, uh, feel His presence? Where would it be? It, it is called the most, most holy place. And by entering the curtain of the most holy place at the tabernacle. Do you remember this picture? Next one. Yeah. This is the tabernacle, right? Yeah. And this is like where the you know, Israelites going through the wilderness, right? 40 years. Next one. And this is the, okay, this is the, where is the most holy place? This is number one, number one right? This is the, the, the ark, and this is the veil, right? We have altar of incense, the lampstand, and table of bread, right? So those, those things are, things were there. And once a year, okay, just once a year, when the ark was covered by the blood of sacrifices, the high, the high priest can go in there and on the day of atonement, right? Mm -hmm. And then, do you uh, know what's in the ark? Does anybody know what's in the ark? Mm -hmm. yeah, some of you already yeah. know, right? <laughs> Including our pastor there. <laughs> so, <laughs> there are three things in the ark, okay? And what are they? One is, according to Paul, you know, Hebrew chapter 9, verse 3, this ark contained a gold jar of manna. Next slide. Gold jar of manna and Aaron's staff with that had, you know, budded. And the two stones of, you know, tablet stones with ten commandments, right? So no, there is nothing special, but, you know, <laughs> Uh, some, some people died by, by just looking into it, you know, as you know, in the Bible. So actually, these three things represent all the sins that we made. Mm. Okay, so these three, you know, things that represent our sins. And what does it mean by Aaron's staff? It is the sin of challenging God's authority. You remember the Gohat family? They just devoured by the, the, the earthquake, right? And then, uh, you know, why do you, do we have to listen to our fathers and mothers, you know, or pastors? We have sinful nature and instinct that we want to against authority. Okay? So, People outside, they, many people are against the, you know, authority sometimes, right? And this is our sinful nature, out of our nature. And the manna means complaints to others. Okay? So when you have a hard time, God is calling you, not others. Okay? And please face the problem by yourself and in front of God. Okay? Amen? So... Please do not blame others. Okay? And these three things are three big categories of our sins and that we make, you know, we make sins against God. And all, all these sins are needs to be covered by what? Blood, sacrifices before God, that um, before we can communicate with God. Okay? So you remember the high priest should you know cover 
the Ark of Covenant with the blood of you know, sacrifices before he goes into it, the, the most holy place. Otherwise, he could be killed, right? So, what needs to be reserved, okay? You want to communicate with God, right? What do we need to reserve before we communicate with God? We have to reserve our sins, okay? We need to cover our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? And, you know, the heaven and God's throne uh, is there. And, and without, it, even you, you do not resolve the, your sins, it doesn't matter. God is there. Amen. And our problem is, how can I find out our sins, and, which is hiding inside of, at the bottom of our mind, and how can, he, how can you know, my sins are forgiven? to be connected to God. That's the problem. And God's throne has, has been there, you know. And, but there are things that we need to from our side. Okay? So I want to reach God's throne. Amen? Amen. You, you also want to reach, you know, to the heaven, right? So to learn this, there are, you know, a law and custom of Israel that was given from God. It's called Goel. Okay? Next slide. Okay. Goel. And it is well described in Levi chapter 25, or Deuteronomy chapter 25, Numbers chapter 5 and 35. This is very special thing for Israelites because um, you, may not, you, you may not find this kind of custom or you know, custom or in, in other countries. So, God made the custom of Goel to explain the salvation of Israelites to us. Okay? So, what is Goel? What is Goel? Okay, let, let me explain the custom, Israel's custom of Goel. And for Israelites, okay, for example, land is not for sale. You cannot sell in, in God's, you know, command, you cannot sell the, the, the patch of land that you, you inherited from your fathers, okay? So they, they think that, you know, land is given by, by God and they have to give it back to their children. So, but there are some, you know, bad situations and finance, financial situations that you cannot keep the land and some of them had to sell the land and without, you know, any options. You know, you just sell it and you have to leave it, right? And since the land is not for sale, they have to call elders. When they sell it, they have to call the elders of the town and more than two elders. The seller and buyer have to write down the details of sales conditions and situations in the document as a buyer and as a seller and price, location, and so on. Details, okay? And then they, they make a scroll like this and they sealed it in front of the elders. Go back, please. And by making the, this seal, you know, seven seals in, in this case, nobody can change the, the descriptions in, in the scroll, right? So here comes another custom, okay? And on, okay, you just get to know, you are an Israelite, and you just get to know that you, somebody, your, your relative, sold the patch of land, okay? And this person is, is a wealthy guy, he's a man of ability, and he wants to buy back to the original seller, okay? And then they have, Israelites have a very strong kinship, right? Like Korean people, right? <laughs> so, in, in our scripture today, what did John see at first on the right hand of God? That was the scroll with seven seals in it. And John immediately realized that this is Goel scroll, you know, the document, Goel document. And the scroll is written on both sides 
as you can see, it's, it's not it's not you know written in another side, but let's assume that. Okay, there are seven seals, and seven seals means that it was completely agreed and signed and sold and sealed. Okay, so when when there is a person who can buy it back to the original seller, this person called a kinsman redeemer. You heard about it? Kinsman redeemer, that means, in other words, it, 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 it is also called savior and redeemer or goel. Okay? So, if, if some, somebody wants to be a goel and, or redeemer, not everybody can do it. So, there are three conditions to be a goel. The first condition is uh, a close family member. Next slide. A kinsman should be the goel, and goel should have ability. You do not have any money, but you cannot do it, right? You cannot buy it back. And the third condition is, it should be, you know, the goel should be a volunteer. Nobody can force. You should do it. <laughs> they, they, they cannot force anybody to be a goel, okay? And in addition, there are items that can be a goel. Not everything can be a goel, okay? So, uh, the, the first item is, uh, the, like I said, land. And the second thing is a person who was, you know, sold as uh, a slave. And another situation is that, you know, uh, from the Ruth, the book of Ruth, when a married man, uh, not man, woman, <laughs> sorry, woman and uh, woman and husband, she lost the husband and becomes a widow, right? And then another single guy in the close family can be a goyal to, to marry the woman and to continue the family, okay? Of the dead guy, okay? And the last situation is the, if somebody in your family is killed unfairly, then you can, you can, you know, do something for that. Okay, these are four conditions. And, okay, let's go back to the Revelation chapter 5. When John saw the scroll on the right hand of God, and he realized that, what, that was royal document. And now, he knew that there should be a redeemer or goel to break the seal, right? And he, but he looked around and he could not find a qualified person and he he just cried right and so before we go there okay let me ask you what what was sold in the in the scroll what was written can you imagine okay so you know what what's in the document what would be in there you know what's the content of the scroll and it was written you know when Adam and Eve sinned against God, okay? And all the descendants of Adam, they were sold at the time, you know, when they made a sin against God. And including everybody, like you and I, all the human beings, they were sold to the Satan, okay? Including whole earth sold to Satan. The whole history was sold to Satan at that time. Okay, now somebody has to redeem the Goyal document. This Goyal document break the seals, and the and John cried because there was nobody you know, who can redeem it. Okay, let's read Revelation chapter five and five. Let's next one. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the Lion of tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and is seven sealed. So who is this person? Can you guess? Jesus Christ, right? And that's why we have Lamb came out the next, you know, at the very next verse, verse, Lamb comes out. So, but, you know, the, sharp, uh, the shape of lamb is slightly different than we expected. Okay, next slide. The lamb, of, lamb has 
seven horns and seven eyes with it, right? Can you see it? The lamb represents, okay, what does it represent as a lamb? Lamb represents a sacrifice, okay? Sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross, right? And the horn means powers and ability, okay? If you have, you know, horns and you want to, you know, kick somebody, right? Hit, the, hit somebody and this is, means power and ability. The seven horns means that lamb has, seven means complete authority and power. And seven eyes means lamb knows everything with the seven spirit, spirits of God. Okay? And the, to redeem the Goel, our Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, sacrificed himself even even though he had all the powers and even though he had the speech of God. So as a follower of Jesus Christ, like you and I, we should realize that it is your and our ultimate blessing that we take our own cross like Jesus did. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because of the Lamb, our sal salvation gets completed, right? He, he did everything to, to make the salvation complete. Mm -hmm. So our paradise called Eden gets restored in, in our lives, right? So when the Lamb of God starts redeeming, the, redeeming as a goyal, when the Lamb takes the scroll and let's see what's happening in verse, verse 8. Verse 8. And when he, he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bars full of incense, which are the prayers of saints. Okay, in the history of God's salvation, please note, note that we can join God's salvation you know, activities. Okay, so there are prayers of the saints, like prayer from our side, prayer from, you know, believers. And this means that, like, keep, okay, keep in mind that our prayers, prayers can reach up to heaven in the golden bowls, bowls full of incense brought by the four living creatures and 24 elders. In addition, they had, you know, harp with the incense, right? Harp means praises that you, you just did, right? Before the sermon, we praised God, right? So these two are very two important things to join God's, you know, salvation business, God's kingdom business, okay? So, the sound of heart means your earnest heart from the bottom of your, your heart. So, you, so when you pray, please put your you know, earnest heart along with your prayers. And make a big sound you know, when you praise God. Okay? Amen? So this is the, the only place that you, that you and I can, can join God's salvation business okay so I hope you I I hope you you praised with your you know earnest heart today amen, amen. okay so in verse 9 uh, they sang a new song who are they in verse 9 uh, okay is okay can you go back yeah. the verse 9 okay they sang a new song and they are the four living creatures and 24 elders. Okay, in verse 12, this is, you know, in, in verse 12, there is another song, right? Uh, it is uh, praises from the angels and numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands. Okay, so in verse 13, there is another song from every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth, or on, this, on the sea, and everywhere. Okay? Finally, in verse 14, four living creatures replies, Amen. 
you know, what are they praise about in this in these verses? They praise God's salvation by the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So because of God's salvation, we become, you know, we want to like praise God like this. Okay. So let's read verse nine. Uh, okay. Let's read the chapter five, verse ten. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve God. They will reign the earth. So we want to. Okay. We are going to reign the whole world, okay? So we, we were like, you know, we were like dust on the ground. And now God wants us to reign the whole world, okay? So, okay, the salvation is finished here, right here. The God's, from God's side, salvation is done. He completed it. But starting from chapter you know, Revelation chapter 6 through 19, there are judgments and tribulations. So why is it? What, why is there? It's all done. You may ask why, you know, there should be a judgment even though the salvation of God is already completed. You know, it is, okay, it is well explained in book of Ruth to explain this. Why do we have to have hard time after the completion of salvation okay so do you remember you know Naomi mm -hmm. do you know Naomi mm -hmm. and and you know there was a redeemer a guy what was his name Boaz, Boaz right so he's a famous guy for you know <laughs> the um, you know the single single woman right <laughs> they they all want to meet like like a guy like a Boaz right <laughs> so so, so yes, it was Boaz and the, the, the Gentile widow called Ruth asked Boaz to, to be her redeemer at the threshing field. You remember that, right? At the night. Yeah. And, and Boaz accepted the marriage proposal from Ruth, right? And, you know, they could, they could not get married immediately. They had to go through some steps, even though between Boaz and you know Ruth, they are in in, in good mood, right? <laughs> but, but but they cannot get married right away because there were there were required required steps before they get get married. In Ruth chapter four, Boaz took ten elders of the town, and ten elders checked whether Boaz can be the redeemer of, the, of Ruth, okay, or not. So, the ten means full number, and it, it also refers to ten commandments. They check, you know, all the laws from God and apply to Boaz, whether he can be the redeemer or not. So, they, on top of it, the elders also check Ruth, whether she is okay, to, to, to get it, or not? Okay. So if if Ruth is, uh, is a you know party girl, you know they 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 could say no. She 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 does not deserve it. But Ruth had good reputation, and so elders said okay. And the family and, uh, okay. So elders. They were carefully checked the reputation of Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. And Boaz was man of ability. So finally, the ten elder, elders decide that you know, it is okay to Boaz to be the goel or redeemer for, for the, you know, Naomi's family. Okay? So the checking and testing period is, is from... Revelation chapter 6 to 19. Okay, so all the judgment and hardships from, um, uh, hardships are the test from God to see whether you and I, um, are we good enough to be the bride of Jesus Christ or not. So even though for a Ruth, 
the ten elders check check the you know Boaz and Naomi, including Ruth. But how about us? God will test us whether we are okay or not as a bride of Christ, since we are going to rule the whole world with God forever, mm -hmm. right? So the seal and the tr uh, trumpet judgments are given to us to look back ourselves. Okay, and please grow your inner being when you face face hard times in your lifetime, and just get get over it with the words of God mm -hmm. and with your faith and mm -hmm. prayers and praises. Amen. 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 Summary. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Summary. Okay, today we learned Revelation chapter 5. At first, learning, uh, uh, we learned the meaning of scroll and on the right hand of God. And we also learned the meaning of Goel, right? So we reviewed the custom of the Goel from Israel and who is our ultimate Goel of God. Who is, who is this person? Jesus Christ. Yes, this is our Lamb, and God, the Lamb of God, and He is our Jesus Christ. He is more than, you know, He paid more than enough to be our boy mm -hmm. on the cross. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, on top of it, there is one way that we can join, you know, uh, God's kingdom business. By what? Praising and prayers. Okay? from your, you know, bottom of your heart, okay? Then, then, four creatures and elders, they put your prayers into the golden bowl and bring it to God, okay? So, please keep, you know, praises and, you know, keep, keep your prayers, okay? And please do not let, let this chance go away, right? Mm -hmm. Please join there, okay? Mm -hmm. So lastly, please be patient until you are verified by God with the, all the har hardships in your life. Amen. Okay? Amen? Amen? To be a bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 This is the word of God.